Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. On this Sunday of Meat Fair, or the Sunday of the Last Judgment, if you prefer, we began the weekend, of course, yesterday morning with the commemoration of the departed, which is the first series of those services we do during, the, of course, the preparatory period, and, of course, throughout Great Lent. One of the things that we see in that service is, yes, indeed, we do commemorate people in general, one of the important things of the service is we remember people by name, by exact name, a specific thing. As much as our spiritual life is, a specific thing, and the details do matter. It's not just a, enough to just say, for all those who have died, even though that has some merit, we do commemorate those who we love by name. Of course, we recite them over here at the commemoration table during the Liturgy of the Departed at the end of the service. And we are, of course, looking at this because it is important for our salvation. Every detail matters. Each individual matters. Each event in our life matters. As the Lord himself says, you will be judged for every idle word that comes out of your mouth. The details matter every moment. And the Lord, of course, today in this parable we know of the sheep and the goats, we have those who have not fed, who have not clothed, who have not given to drink, who have not visited, who have not taken care of the sick, cast into the left side of the goats, and those who have done those things properly receive their salvation, enter to the joy of the Lord. So each every event of each and every day of our lives matters, whether we decide each decision we make to say our prayers or not, or come to church or not, or feed that person that's coming up to us asking for money or not, it matters. Whether we decide to issue that harsh word or a loving word, it matters. Whether we offer correction when we should or don't offer it, it matters. Every detail matters. Amongst the lives of the saints today, we have the venerable Dositheos of Gaza. Some of you, or many of you, in fact, I know have read Dorotheus of Gaza at some point in your orthodoxy, whose spiritual counsels among the most fundamental of orthodox writings in the spiritual life. If you haven't read it, well, you should. Many times, perhaps. His chapter on judgment alone is worth the entire book and probably as good as anything that's ever been written in orthodoxy as far as this priest is concerned. Josephus was his disciple. Josephus was a, a man of the world, a young man, who served under a general who was of the noble ranks. He had a bit of pedigree to him. He lived a good life as far as the world was concerned. Money, probably not the best life outside of that. And one day, he became curious as to what it was these Christians really believed in. He didn't, didn't know much about it. You know, he, I think he was part of that role, of course, a Christian, but never lived it. This is the 6th or 7th century. And one time, he begged his master if he could go to see the Holy Land. And his, his, uh, his master arranged for him to be able to go there. And in one of the monasteries he goes into, or churches, he sees this, this depiction of the Last Judgment. He's pondering this. He's pondering this and wondering what this all could mean. He's horrified, of course, by some of the depictions we see on the icon before us. And about that time, as he's looking at this, a woman appears to him. And then the woman starts to explain it to him. And he says, well, then how can I possibly be saved? The woman says to him, which is probably quite appropriate for today's feast, of course. She says to him, fast, do not eat meat, and pray as much as possible. And then she disappears. This was the mother of God. And that's not a call for all of us. Of course, the fasting and the, the prayers certainly are, and the meat certain times of years. But for Dositheus, this was his path. And Dositheus began to follow this. Of course, it really concerned his master, concerned those of nobility around him. Why? Dositheus had changed his life so radically. And they encouraged Dositheus to go visit a monastery because this is, seemed to be where he was leaving, and he does. He goes to, to Gaza. He had heard of the famous abbot Cerados, and of course under abbot Cerados in this monastery, you had Saints Barsanufius and John, Saint Dorotheus. It was a rather thriving and spiritual place. So they decide to send him to Dorotheus because nobody really wants to deal with him because he's doesn't seem like he can handle the way of life they're living. This is an austere way of life. All he says to them, everybody that asks him is, I want to be saved. I just want to be saved. 
Herothius takes him under his wing as he was instructed to do by St. Barsanufius and John and begins to train him in the life. And he's, he's a very good monk. The amazing thing about him is he's, he's quite obedient. He's not as good at certain things as others. He's not perhaps as good at fasting or keeping vigil. He probably he ran his mouth a bit too much to where Dorotheus would frequently tell him to put a wine sock in his mouth, basically our equivalent of put a sock in it. And he learned to be quiet because of this. Spiritual fathers sometimes need to be difficult as well. And he taught him with specificity how to deal with those around him, to deal with love, how to learn to love his neighbor. One of the famous stories with Dositheus is that one day as he was serving in the, I believe it was the infirmary, and he, would, he said a harsh word to one of his brothers. And some of the other brothers go and get out of the Rotheus because Dositheus is locked himself away in a closet and all he can do is hear him and they're weeping. <coughs> Dositheus, what are you doing? He comes in there and asks him, makes him come out. He said, I spoke harshly to my brother. I said unpleasant things to my brother. He says to him, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Don't you know that he is Christ? You do want to make Christ suffer? And Dositheus, of course, is even more humbled by this. He tells him to rise up and try again, to try to show love to his brother who is Christ. And Dositheus goes away comforted. Later on, it happens again. This happens several times. And of course, Dorotheus comes to him once the brothers go find him again. And he said, Dositheus, what are you doing? Have you upset Christ again? These sound like very strong words, but they're very real and true words when we're overly cruel or overly harsh to our brothers, that we are upsetting Christ. It is Christ that dwells within them. And eventually, because of this dealing with each individual as it really matters, because it does, Rosetheus learned to be much more meek and gentle. Another great story of him as he was serving, he needed, he needed a garment. So Abba Dorotheus told him, go sew yourself a proper cassock. So he does. He's quite gifted at this, apparently. And he comes to him and says, well, how did it go? How did the cassock you made go? He said, well, it's beautiful. I did a the job that went well. Go give it to that sick man over there. It's repeated over and over and over. He would make the garment. You see that poor man outside? Go give him the garment. And the amazing thing about Dositheus in this training he never complained. He never said, but I made that garment for myself. That was for me. He did what Abba the Rothius told him under obedience. Now, eventually, Lysithius gets rather ill, and he can't even pray for himself anymore. He's so destroyed, and he, and he dies. And the brothers are amazed when they hear Abba the Rothius say, now he's praying for us before the All Holy Trinity. Because this man had not been here much time. They didn't know much about him. He certainly wasn't as ascetic as some of them were, even though his asceticism <clears throat> was down most of us. And then they asked him how he could possibly say this. He told him because Cetheus was an obedient monk. He followed the will of God. He followed his spiritual father, no matter what he said. Eventually, one of the older monks in the monastery asked if he can please, he prays and he prays, may I see what, who, which brothers of our monastery have attained to the kingdom of heaven. And he's taken up in this vision. And one of the people he sees he doesn't quite recognize, but there's a very young man to the side. And he asks who this is, and he's told, it's Josephius. He comes back and tells the brothers to their great comfort and their edification, because they learned by watching the life of Dositheus to be obedient to the Word of God in all the details of life, in the most minute things to not complain, to give glory to God, to accept His will for whatever, whatever it may be, to be gentle with others, to look for Christ in every situation, every person, every event, to fast as the church has told him, because he fasted very austere there, because that was what he was told by the Mother of God to do, and his spiritual father. Now with us, each and every day is the same, because we're going to have someone come to us today that irritates us, very likely. We're going to have someone come up to us and ask for something, 
We're going to have somebody undo some work we did in the house or mess something up we liked, take something from us that we think to be ours, let us off in traffic, all the numerous things that somebody's going to do. That event matters. Because as the fathers say, and it's actually alluded to in the prophet Ezekiel, in the state I find you, I will judge you. That's a shocking statement. If the Lord says that to us, and I believe it has to be true, he won't to find us in the best state possible. A state of repentance, a state of love, a state of watchfulness, because every detail does matter. And this is not a harsh way of life. This is not a way that should burden us. This is a way that lifts us up to the kingdom of heaven. This is the way that fills our hearts with joy and gladness, that fills our hearts with Christ, because we become little Christs when we do this. It is a gospel of love, because everything the Lord is saying in this gospel is about love. To love our neighbors, to good to those who do good unto us, and to those who wrong us, especially those. It is not, as many of us want to portray it totally, as, as fearful and scary, even though that aspect is there. We listened to the canon last night, we read over and over the details of what faced us. Now most of us don't want to deal with that. It's one of the details in life that most people skip over and pass. And don't want to deal with it because it frightens them. But of course, if we think about this in a truly orthodox manner, the Lord tells us this parable not only because it is a fact, but because it is out of love. And he shows us the medication. He shows us the path to our salvation and how to live that we might not be cast on the left side with those goats, that we might stand with those Sethios on the right side and try with great diligence to repent of our wrongdoings toward others, to our lack of love for others, as this gospel shows, and to show mercy and kindness because each and every individual, each name that is commemorated on the Saturdays, each name among the living, truly matters in the eyes of God. Venerable Father Josethios, pray to God for us.